the fire alarm box calls the signals, a complex nerve center of thousands of miles of cable and wire goes into split-second action in one of the five borough communication centers that link the city of New York to its municipal army of firefighters. Audible and light signals activate the men. The firebox location is checked. Everything rechecked and recorded. And the same box signal is transmitted to the proper fire companies in a matter of seconds. Now, at the firehouse, the signal is noted, the box location determined. And the race against death speeds on with the call, turn out. Now the training, skill, and experience of New York's firefighters are brought into action, emergency action. Seconds count where life and property are at stake. Seconds count where the race against death already has started, with death having the head start. There's only one thing on a firefighter's mind when the alarm comes in, a race against the second hand, a race against death, a race against destruction, a race for life. A race where 55 tons of steel speed through city streets with its load of ladders, hose, chemicals, nets, rope guns, tools of all kinds, and men of all skills. And as the fire companies respond, communications radios further confirmation on the call box. Within two minutes, the fire department of the city of New York rushes men and equipment to the box which has been pulled for a fire call. enough to pull a box and send in an alarm for help. A fire may be as far as three blocks away from a box. When seconds count, it's vital that you wait at the box to direct the men to the scene of the fire. The very nature of a fireman's job is risk. His skill, his training, and his very life are dedicated to the protection of all people in all emergencies. But when irresponsible people, young or old, send in a false alarm, then the risk is compounded. A false alarm is against the law. A false alarm is against the very lives and property of a community. This is a wrecked engine. You can replace this engine. It only costs money. But what about the men who rode this engine on their way to a false alarm? This is the charred skeleton of a building. You can replace this building. It only costs money. But what about the lives of the people who live there, waiting for the engine that never came? wrecked on its way to a false alarm. A false alarm is an act of destruction caused not by fire, but by a twisted human mind. A false alarm affects the firemen, concerns the police, and is a life and death matter to every member of the community. Fire, and the alarm comes into communications by box or phone. Information received determines the location of the nearest firebox. But if the nearest companies are already out on another alarm, then the next company is notified. The house watch writes down the location of the fire. And the men turn out. The commanding officer verifies the location. In a matter of seconds, the men are on their way. And as they rush on their way to the fire, anywhere, all the time, communications serves as an invisible link between the firefighters and their superiors responsible for the safety of the city of New York.
matter what kind of a fire, it could have been prevented by sufficient safeguards, proper protective maintenance, and by just plain common sense in calling for help at the very first sign of fire. vital to discover its origin, to limit its spread, and to save lives, both those of the occupants and the men fighting the fire. This is the responsibility of the commanding officer, and his duty also to call for more help if he cannot place the fire under immediate control. And by radio phone, communications is notified. Additional help contacted. directed to respond to the scene of the fire. Thus, communications links all firefighters receiving, sending, and recording vital information. The engines and the men are not here. They are fatal minutes away responding to a false alarm. Your corner alarm box links your firefighting forces for your protection. More than 320 square miles, more than $27 billion worth of property, and more than eight million people. This is the city of New York. And its protection from the ravages and destruction of fire is the sole responsibility of your fire department. This is a job that's always on an emergency footing, a job your fire department handles by land, sea, and air 24 hours a day with their special skills and equipment, all only seconds away from your corner fire alarm box and seconds away by phone and radio. Thus, communications, the very nerve center of the fire department, spreads a network of protection over the lives of eight million people and the city in which they live. The city of New York. 